why are we so afraid to talk about or even say the word vagina especially yeah. as african women yeah i think we we grew up in in households same as same as you and and you know mine is even more trickier because my mom is and shame uh, she always says oh you tell the story all the time i'll never <laughs> I'll never pay for my sins. Yeah. Um, she, my mother is a midwife, or, oh, or she's wow. retired, she was a midwife. Okay. And yet, because what we didn't grow up with, nobody sat with her and told her about her period um, and made it okay for her to speak about these things. Mm. So she always almost like separated her work and knowledge from being a mom. Welcome to the Level Lion Show, the biggest marketing and entrepreneurship podcast on the African continent. Guys, today I am really excited for the guests that we have over because she's going to be talking about something that honestly I'm a little bit afraid to talk about and I think a lot of us feel weird confronting these kinds of topics and I want to open this podcast up to all the conversations that we have as women because yes we do have careers and we are parents etc but we're also women and we need to learn how to take care of that and and acknowledge that so that we can live full and happy lives and as you know on this podcast we don't introduce our guests they introduce themselves <laughs> but before she does that don't forget to like share subscribe comment do all the things that make the pods to happen and get people to watch this podcast to engage because this is where all the fire information is now let's get back to our beautiful guest please introduce yourself Firstly, hi Lebo. Hi. <laughs> how are you? I'm good. How you are you? Great. You look absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. So do Bye. you. So my name is Dr. Mpume Zenda, uh, also known as Dr. Gaini. I am an ob sexologist. Um, that's really what I do. Yeah. Over and above that, I'm a woman, I'm a mom, I'm a partner, I'm yes. a lover. Um, and, and I'm really excited to be here. Thank you so much for, you know, spending some time with us and really going through this topic because I'm nervous. I won't even lie. <laughs> like, I am so nervous. I don't even know why I am this nervous, but I am because it's something I don't talk about often with anyone, really, you yeah. know, except for maybe my gynecologist who I also just sometimes wish she'd keep quiet because I'm like, why are you doing this to me? Why, right why are we having this conversation? Why are you having this conversation? I think let's start with the who. Yeah. Tell us about who you are and how you got to being Dr. Gaini. Yeah, so I actually grew up in rural KZN, mm -hmm. South Coast, um, with both my parents. I am the firstborn. We are five in total as Whoa. siblings. Um, and I had the awesome privilege of, of we are four girls and one uh, 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 brother. Yes. And he's the youngest, so we really didn't grow up together. And literally, my parents, we went from being at home, I went to boarding school, and the only thing I wanted to do when they would ask me, so what do you want to become? I was like, I just want to help people. Wow. Um, so let me, let me not even, you know, <sighs> How do I say? You know, you get people who are like, oh no, I knew as, as, as when I was five that I wanted to do this. No, it, it's literally, I call it, it's a breadcrumb trail mm. where there was first a feeling of just wanting to help people. And the only natural thing I applied for was medicine. And then I got through medicine, which was really tough. I was like, nobody should go through that <laughs> ever again. Um, and, and I remember after uh, I qualified tossing between psych and, uh, um, you know, gynae because I thought, okay, this is nice. I like it. I enjoy it. But it wasn't until literally I had, I was just in the middle of my comm serve and I was thrown at Barra by chance, um, ended up in the maternity unit. And I had a woman who was pregnant and uh, I was also pregnant and we're having this conversation. And I thought to myself, hmm, I could do this. The only difference between her and I is just that I did a bit of time at medical school, but to be able to break down things that we often wonder about without having anybody to ask. Mm. And I thought I could do this. And then in terms of the sexology part was literally when I finished specializing, I realized, oh snap, 
everybody wants to have children or maybe not everybody but you know we're encouraged to have children but nobody ever talks about the sex part mm -hmm. like how does that come about let alone just the idea of pleasure let alone the idea of getting to understand our bodies and knowing how we are wired so it was a mixture of things that i experienced as a young girl as a young lady as a young woman mm -hmm. but also realizing the gaps within my own training that no man nobody's really or very few people are paying attention to the things that matter to us mm -hmm. and so my journey began Again, I was fortunate to, um, and like I say, you know, when the student is really the, the, the teachers appear, I had a great mentor, Professor McIntosh, in terms of the sexology, um, went to Europe, did my fellowship, um, and, and, and also to be able to translate it to especially the way my own people, mm. people who look like me, understand it and break down the cultural issues, the stigmas, the taboos. And I said, girls, I'm going to take one for the team. <laughs> you know, and so it's okay for you to be nervous. Yes. Um, and, and one of the things I really enjoy is having the conversation in a way that makes the next person feel comfortable mm. to a point where you can also start saying, guys, let's talk about sex. Why, yeah. why not? Let's talk about vaginas. Let's talk about our bodies. Um, and, and I think we need that for the for the next generation something about getting comfortable with who you are in your own skin allows you to show up so differently wherever you go mm, i love what you said and i want to talk about <laughs> The big V in the room, vagina. Please, please say, please. The vagina. There you go. Vagina. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about that, but before we do, I just want to touch on something you mentioned about mentorship, right? Yes. Yes. How important is mentorship in your journey to success as a woman? Yeah. And how do you access mentors when you come from a place where maybe you might not have people who can mentor you through the journey that you're on? Yeah, I think it's important to be aware that we, we at any point in your life, you never know everything. Mm -hmm. There's always someone ahead. There's always someone behind you. Yeah. And, and to be able to, to know that you're constantly a learning being, it means you constantly have to be tapping. Um, I can't remember who it was, um, and, and I love this. They said, who are, your, who are the mentors you would like to have in your life? And very often, we scramble around people we know physically mm. and and i said well what if i want oprah what if yes. i want td jakes <laughs> what if i want you know robin sharma and and the reality is the world has become so interconnected now that you can have Oprah as your as your mentor. Maybe mm. not in the direct. Sometimes we we want to be spoiled and be babysat and be you know with the physical. But there's so much information. All the great people we we who inspire us, they they put put their work out there. Um, I, I I I tell people I get coached by Robin Sharma. Have I met Robin Sharma? No. Mm -hmm. um, but he's got courses that I sit and I go through them. They make sense. Mm. Um, so mentorship is is. Is it can be dynamic. Mm. Um, over and above, I think in the medical space, um, I was always the, the the doctor or the 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 student who was always out of the box. Mm. I hung around the creatives. Um, I was never quite like my peers. I dressed differently, mm -hmm. and now I understand why. And so even the mentors that I had very often were not necessarily from within the medical fraternity. Mm. Um, it was you know people who are entrepreneurs. It was um, you know my I call my mother professor mcintosh yes she is a medic in terms of her training but personality wise and and the opportunities she's been able to hold my hand hand through had nothing to do with medicine um i, I got to do radio tv probably primarily because of her Oh, I love that. Mentorship and learning is dynamic, right? So you can literally access anyone you want to access and any knowledge if you just allow yourself to be open to that yeah. experience. Before we go into that vagina <laughs> conversation, um, I want to ask one more question. I think maybe this is directed to the medical students, yes. the, the female medical students. Can you give us five success or not even success survival tips to survive medical school? Um, one of the big things that, and, and I did a lot of 
when I, when I qualified as a specialist, I did a lot of uh, training interns. Yeah. And one of the, the, the things that I personally went through and absolutely did not like was this idea that just because you're a medical student or you're an intern or you're a junior, that your life revolves around that. Mm. I say to them, your career is only just, if you look at, if you think of your, your life as, as your finger, it's just one finger. So don't be that kind of person who's like, I'm on call, I'm post call, I can't do anything. And, yeah. and you kind of take away so much from your own life because it is intense. Our mm. health system is unfortunately not perfect. And I believe no industry is perfect and so um that is the first one live your life find out what are the other things that you enjoy doing don't neglect your friends just because you're becoming a doctor you know <laughs> <laughs> right um taking care of yourself mm -hmm. um, um and mentally we get exposed to quite a lot of traumatic events. Um, I remember, I can still remember very clearly the first baby that died, you mm. know, um, whilst I was part of the team that was caring for that uh, particular case. And at no one at any point took me by hand and said, are you okay? Mm. And so to be, to be self-aware enough to know that I need to be um, taking care of myself and the only way that I can actually be uh, um, fruitful in my work is to be able to uh, um, take care of myself. Number three is don't, you don't necessarily have to follow what your predecessors have done. There's all, almost this idea that, oh, this is the only way to do it. Mm -hmm. You become a student, an intern, a comserve, uh, then you specialize. Specializing is not for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and I think now there are more avenues and opportunities for you that don't necessarily require even to practice figure out what you like and use your degree, your, 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 your training to the absolute best. And last but not least, don't forget to be kind and, and give. We often are, you know, are under a lot of pressure, um, whether it's understaffed or overworked. And the, 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 the easiest thing is to step on those who are most vulnerable, mm. is, to, is to be dismissive to those who need us the most. Don't do it. Oh, Don't that's do beautiful. Yeah. Don't forget to be kind. Don't forget to be kind. Always be kind. Always. I love it. Now we're going into the <laughs> vagina section of the podcast. <laughs> and guys, you know, I, I'm being quite vulnerable in sharing my discomfort in this topic because I think it's also part of the process of being comfortable with it, you know? A lot of us want to pretend that we're okay with things or that we're used to things that we're not. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you now that I don't come from a household where we speak about vaginas. Yes. My parents relied on, I think it was in grade six, yeah. they would bring a, a, a doctor or someone, I can't right. even remember, and she'd come and tell us about periods and vaginas right. and sex. Yeah. My mom was like, we paid for your education, <laughs> they taught <laughs> someone you. Someone else. You <laughs> exactly. But not everybody yeah. has that privilege. So I wanted us to, to start this conversation, and hopefully you'll direct me, um, the vagina conversation, and just yeah. to say, firstly, why are we so afraid to talk about or even say the word vagina, especially yeah. as African women? Yeah, I think we, we grew up in, in households, same as same as you. And, and, you know, mine is even more trickier because my mom is, and shame, uh, she always says, oh, you tell the story all the time. I'll never, <laughs> I'll never pay for my sins. Um, she, my mother is a midwife or, oh, or she's wow. retired, she was a midwife. Okay. And yet because what we didn't grow up with, nobody sat with her and told her about her period um, and made it okay for her to speak about these things. Mm. So she always almost like separated her work and knowledge from being a mom. And yet um, she, 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 it's only when, you know, now when I'm older and we're having a conversation, she's like, I didn't realize how much you needed that. Yes. Um, and, and so it is that, that culture of we don't talk about things you don't talk unless you're spoken you know speak don't speak unless you're spoken to um but 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 i think things are changing and mm. i believe we are yes. uh, a, a better version um and, and 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 i always look back for example at our parents and say they did their best with yes. what they knew so yeah. it's not necessarily a how come you didn't do that <laughs> you're not reprimanding <laughs> but we're just pointing it out having the conversation mm. is important and and Sometimes I say, 
it's very tricky to start talking about a vagina if you've never spoken to your children about what do you like, what do you enjoy? You, you kind of, you have to get used to that rapport. It's like, I'm sure you know, being on camera, mm. the more you do it, the better. Yes. And, and, and so whether you move from either a social media uh, video to then a something big, like a TV thing, mm. it's like just a very swift transition. Yes. Same thing with conversations. If we don't learn to not only talk, communicate, but also languaging is very important. Yes. The languaging, the yes. names, because if you think of vagina in any of our vernacular languages, um, the, the, it, it has been given so much negativity mm. and vulgar. And part of it is that it's, it's, it's difficult. It's, it makes it difficult because how do you uh, acknowledge what is not respected, mm. you know? Uh, um, you know, it's it, villainized. It, it's villainized. literally the evil character in the story of society. Exactly. <laughs> and yet everybody, I almost said one sub. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you're not lying. If, yeah. if, I mean, to a large extent, right? So I think what we like to do on this podcast is yeah. define things right. so that we can all be on the same page. Correct. So what is a vagina? In fact, the more correct way of saying it is a vulva. Okay. Because the vulva is every, because when we, when you, maybe let me ask you, when you say vagina, what do you yeah. think of? The sexual reproductive organ. So I just think right. of it as a tool to have sex <laughs> and to give birth. To give Honestly, birth. that's, I don't even want to think about it half right. the time. Yeah, no, that's, that's how I see it. You know, and, and by the way, I promise you, probably most of us, mm -hmm. the, the, like I say, the only difference is that I've just did, I've just done a bit of time in terms of, because that's what I do. Um, so, so everything that is outer is referred to as the vulva. Okay. The vulva. So the lips, um, uh, uh, the, the, the top, um, all around, that's, that's known as the vulva. Yeah. And then there are different parts. When you go, when you open the lips a bit, right at the top, you've got the magical, amazing <laughs> clitoris. <laughs> okay. Right? And literally just below the clitoris, you've got what you call the urethra, the opening for pee. Yes. It's incredible how many people don't know you pee from a different hole, uh, you have six from a different hole. Yeah. Uh, you go do number two from a different different hole. Yeah. Right. So it is the clitoris, the urethra where pee comes out, and then the hole that then for sexual intimacy or intercourse and delivering of babies, that's the vagina. So the vagina itself mm -hmm. is the hole, not the outer part. Okay. And then you've got the anal region, which is the backside. Yeah. So yeah. the entire thing would be described as the vulva. vulva. Okay. So, cool. so what we commonly refer to as the vagina, vagina. Sh we sh actually should be saying vulva. But you know, okay, yeah. we're learning something <laughs> new today. It's a vulva, not the vagina, unless you're talking about childbirth and sex. Yes. Yes. Okay. So now that we know what a vulva is, let's talk about the sexual part of it because I think that's the part that most people talk about on podcasts and etc. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of misinformation when sure. it comes to that. As a young girl, as uh, you start your period and then you become curious about sex, yeah. what kind of conversations should your parent or your mother be having with you? Mm. Uh, where do we start with the whole sex conversation? <laughs> you actually don't start with the sex conversation. Okay. I think um, our children are very, very uh, smart and they often are giving us cues in terms of conversation mm. so you you find sort of like two three four year olds are already asking about things like the differences between why is mom different from dad or why is my brother different why is mine different from and 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 very often we shut those conversations because of what we have honestly sort of like almost sexualized about those yes. conversations meanwhile the kids are just asking very innocently so that's a good place to start um and then when they hit about nine years particularly girls they start to have their hormonal changes happen mm. um so the whether it the cascade goes from the brain to the to the to basically the reproductive organs and and those hormones start to change certain things about our body what we call puberty so being able to explain to your child um or or a young one 
simple things like, um, oh, by the way, the reason you're having moods is not because something is wrong with you. Mm. It's, 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 it's the changing of your hormones. You're becoming a young woman. Um, to why are my breasts painful? Those are all the small things that, I mean, for example, I've got a 12-year-old daughter. She will come like, Mom, my, my nipples are, are, are painful. <laughs> and and, and that, that's a cue for you to start explaining why that is happening. Mm. And understandable, if you're not necessarily in the medical space, you might not quite understand why or know. Mm. Get somebody who does. Um, and, and we are working on a beautiful material that's coming out early next year for to help that kind of space um things like hips things like um bullying thing emotional uh, uh, intelligence when you start doing that you find that you have created a platform for them when they start being curious about whether it's being curious about boys or curious about uh, other girls you can start having that conversation. Parents sometimes don't understand how much of a trusted source they are mm. for their children. And if you close that door, believe you me, they're gonna go and find it somewhere else. And in this day and age, it's even worse because there's so much exposure in terms of the internet, in terms of all the social media platforms and so on, so uh, television. So our kids have a constant bombarding of information about these things and explicitly so, um, such that if you haven't drawn the boundaries and taught them exactly what is what, teach them don't call it a flower or a petunia <laughs> or i mean a google yeah like google for what guys we eat cake bro. yeah <laughs> i didn't mean that pun but yeah. you know um teach them what the right word is because also let's not be naive we do live in a world where we've got some sick people out mm. there you want your child to be so alert and know when someone is doing something that is not okay mm. and have a clear picture as to what to do i run to mom i run to dad i run to aunt or whoever the guardian is and report something or somebody who's saying things that are, are, are uncomfortable I love what you said and the whole call it what it is yeah. you know don't try to romanticize it make it real for the person yes. and this also leads me to thinking about how when a girl starts her period all of a sudden people assume that you're sexually active right and so there's a lot of shaming in you becoming a woman yeah let's talk about that because yes. you are a professional you know the conversations that happen around this I had a, a similar experience with, mm. with my mom and, and it was quite hurtful. It took us years mm. and, and I, I actually, the more I asked about it, you know, now as a gynae, a lot more women my age, older, went through similar experiences. Mm. And yes, we understand that um, because they were not taught, they didn't know how to teach us, um, but, but it can be quite crippling. And I think we need to move into a culture of making menstrual, in fact, let me not say menstruation alone, because puberty as a whole yes, yeah. is a coming of age, is a celebration. I love, um, you know, the closer culture, what they do with, 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 they, with their boys, mm. you know, how they transition from, from you know, childhood to manhood. Um, and, 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 and I don't believe that we can't do those things anymore. In, in our own respective way, in, in, in the way that is appropriate and culturally appropriate for, for each of us, we can do that so that our girls don't grow up feeling like something is wrong with me by virtue of becoming a woman. Mm. Um, also, simple things like giving them the confidence to know, I mean, if I ask a lot of people, so what was your experience? I was just handed over, yeah. you know, a packet of <laughs> pads. I didn't know how wings go around what, and, and sometimes this thing gets like scrunched up, sometimes it leaks. Nobody sat me down and actually said, so this is how you do it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it was such a privilege for me when my daughter started a period to be able to take it through how I would have wanted it to be. We went and bought stuff. We did a period party for her wow. um, with her cousins. We bought her presents. Um, and then we, we got like a bag and we put all the things that she would need so that in case of an accident at school, those are the things that can be so embedded in a girl's life if you have an accident and the whole class sees it. And we're still waiting maybe for government to supply, you know, 
sanitary uh, towels in the schools. But until then, um, a lot of girls, especially in the more disadvantaged schools, mm. they go without. They stay at home when they're on their periods because of that shame of what do I do? Nobody went to Sarah and saying, Tell I'm a period, guys. Yes. And can we treat it as such? And if we can have condoms for free, mm -hmm. the how, why not? Are we having, are we not having a, a sanitary towels um, for free? I love that because your period is not a choice. No. It's a part of being a woman. Absolutely. So those things should be free to give yeah. us dignified uh, lives. Yeah. So when do we, as women, as families, start to say, okay, now is the right time for our boy child or girl child to start having sex? And what is sex? Yeah. <laughs> what is uh, it? That's a very good question as well, because, you know, often we think, maybe let me start by the first one. Mm. Um, when, when do they? And, and that I, you and I could never be the custodians of that kind of, guide mm. you know it it's it's dependent on so many things um and 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 i still would like to believe parents are the the guardianship of every child and in terms of their value system in terms of whatever that influences them um but probably one of the important thing before or, or what i often say when i think of my daughter is I would want you to spend more time getting to know yourself mm. because when you get to know and figure out yourself, try out as many things as you can, whether it's sports, whether it's your idea of what a career, um, whether it is um, even like our high tea parties that we do, <laughs> we should be taking our girls there so mm. they can figure out, oh, I like that, nah, that's not for me kind of thing. The more somebody gets to know who they are, you are you are sort of like underhanded teaching them how to advocate for themselves mm -hmm. because i can tell you for free our daughters will not phone us and say mom i'm about to <laughs> right <laughs> but you want to know that you have planted enough good stuff in them mm -hmm. that you can trust that when they decide it is right for them, it'll most likely come from a place not of coercion, not of peer pressure, not of a self-doubt, not of a I'm trying to please someone and I'm doing it for someone else and not uh, myself, but it'll come from a, 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 a rich somebody who's confident about themselves. Mm. Um, and, and also when we start talking about, so what is sex? Again, I'm, I, I keep saying, let me throw it back at you. What do you define sex as? <sighs> sharing, sharing your vagina. <laughs> <laughs> Even though with, like, with, <clears throat> sharing the vagina with with an with another person, whether that's a male or a female, but. Right. I, I see it as that kind of thing. Right. That's a very basic description of what sex is. And yeah. I know that there's penetration involved if it's with a man, but with a woman, I'm not too sure how that would work. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's sharing your body with somebody else in a way that gives you pleasure. Yes, yeah. I, lo I love that. Sharing your body with somebody in a way that gives you pleasure. And perhaps I would even say um, ex exploring your body mm. in a way that gives you pleasure because the assumption is often that sex or sexual intimacy um, has to be a partner thing. What mm. about self-pleasure? Self-pleasure is still in the spectrum of sexual intimacy, which is why I often shy away from, you know, sex or sexual intercourse, because sexual intercourse means uh, a penis is going inside a vagina. Mm. That already excludes a lot of people, a lot of things. Um, some people just want to cuddle naked. Some people, um, in fact, I have always encouraged couples, for example, take the penetrative part off the table mm. and do everything else. That's still sexual intimacy. Mm. So it is being vulnerable and sharing yourself with somebody for the purpose of pleasure, mainly pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a, I mean, I, I get surprised about the number of uh, um, reasons people have sexual intimacy for, mm. but to, to know that it is for you, first and foremost mm. for yourself, and not for the other person. You know, I love that you speak about sexual intimacy and not sex. Because yeah. I also grew up thinking, 
sex is something I'm going to give to my husband or my boyfriend <laughs> when he behaves or something. You know, that's literally like a the narrative, like a reward. That's yeah. the narrative I see in movies. I see it everywhere. When you hear your mothers and whatever speaking about these things, that's what I'd hear them say, you yeah. know. So it was almost used as a tool, you know, for power in a yes, relationship. Yes. And I like that you're stripping that away and actually saying it's not that. No. It's about you. It's not about so, the other person yeah. first. Yeah. You know, so, okay, we, we understand what sexual intimacy is. Where do we start with it? Some of us, some people watching this are 45 years old. Some people are 22 years old. And they're probably curious about Dr. Gaini sitting here. Can she give me some tips on how do I start exploring sexual intimacy within myself? Start with something that's comfortable for you. Yeah. And and one of the big one of the big things that we often don't think about. We think sex is just a or sexual intimacy is just a physical expression. Mm. Um, but part of the reason why we also struggle is because it is not. Mm. It is all of you engaging, um, which is why I often say if your value system is not aligned with what you are doing physically. That's why you check out. That's why it's not nice. That's why you don't enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Until you yourself are aligned with all of you, your, me your mental, your spiritual, your, your, your needs and wants from that kind of, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, atmosphere. Yeah. Um, if you're doing it for the other person, you're self-betraying in, in so many ways. And the likelihood is that you will walk out of that experience feeling like, I didn't enjoy that. Mm -hmm. So many, particularly women, did not enjoy their first time, mm -hmm. you know, be because of those things, but also um, because nobody taught them how. How? <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, so many of us are even afraid to look down there. Mm. So, so where do you start? Again, get acquainted with yourself. Get acquainted with who you are and, and be in... I love the word safe spaces yes. because you have to feel safe to be able to strip yourself down like that mm. and be vulnerable with someone else um, and, and, and know that I can trust them with, with all of me. Um, so there's no, I mean, we like saying, oh no, it was just a one night stand, it was just that. Those are the things that leave scars that we end up having to work through mm. later on. But even if you've gone through those, um, I, I think the beautiful thing is, is as human beings, we, we, we grow, we're growing. Our brains also have this, you know, elasticity yeah. of, of growing and, and, and becoming more of who you are would be the best thing you can do because then you can advocate and say i like this mm -hmm. i don't like that yeah i you know i i i i'm, I'm bringing this you, you were saying we, we we want to give sex to other people yeah how about you walk in there and say i'm coming to, i'm coming to get everything <laughs> everything that i can get but also here's the deal um you can't come in and, and say, I want to come and get and collect 100% of pleasure from this experience, and you bring absolutely nothing, mm. you know? Um, also things like, we have to read deep and wide. Research, not just read, mm. just read about it, just read what things, oh, okay, this excites me, mm, this is not quite for me. Um, we, we often just think it's a, by osmosis, I'm gonna figure it out. Yes. You know, I'm gonna wing it there, and it's, hmm. This is going to sound like a really silly question. No, there's no but, such. <laughs> but my friend was talking about using a mirror, you know, and looking at your yeah. vagina. What are you looking for if you don't know, like, anything about vaginas and vulvas? When I take that mirror and explore, what am I, what am I looking for? What's the, what's the point? Let me ask you a silly question, too. Yeah. How many times have you ever had someone from, let's say you are buying an Apple phone or mm -hmm. a... How many times have you ever had someone actually talk you through exactly what is what on your phone. And how many of us actually even read the manuals? And yet, the more we go through our phones, we figure out how things work. Mm. And when we don't know how it works, we go to Google yes. and we check it out, right? These resources. I mm. think sometimes we are uh, secretly lazy, <laughs> you know, and stuff. And also, I mean, have you ever wondered to yourself, if I've never looked down there, what am I even giving to what, another what, person? What, what, what's going on down there? Yeah. Right. Um, I, I know that most of the time it is mask. It is masking a lot of shame. You know, um, I, I've heard women say my vagina is ugly, or I don't ever want to see 
um, what's happening down there. And, and, and so there's this element of self loathing And I do believe there's connections of that to, you know, the, the traumas we experience, like, you know, talking about where when you start your period, you're suddenly made to feel ashamed about your, your reproductive self. Um, and so all those things, um, it's important to figure out how do we heal those things so that you can take a mirror and have a look and say, hmm, hello, darling, you look amazing today. You okay. look happy, you look healthy. Um, it also allows you to be able to, when things are not, I mean, it's summer, it's hot. Yes. Uh, thrush is roaring mm -hmm. in so many people and if you don't know what it is it's just a change in your ph you might want to do one or two things to tweak that yeah people already start thinking oh my god was that a sexually transmitted infection <laughs> uh, I, I should i use yogurt does that should work I, to people drinking cranberry juice yogurt, and using yogurt <laughs> you know, we are, oh, do those things work no. so you always go to a doctor essentially you, I don't think you always have to go to a doctor. Just learn. I mean, thank God, there's Dr. Gaini, yes. uh, uh, you know, <laughs> pages as well, which just basic things about what your vagina is supposed to be, the pH, mm -hmm. what are the things that can change that. I mean, we're like, oh no, we don't do this far, we're going to sew a can be. I'm just like, all those bubble baths, it's okay it's once in a while, similar. but it's not good for your vagina, yeah. mm. right? So it's knowing those small things. If in doubt, get a professional. Don't yes. DIY uh, uh, um, anything when it comes to that. But but get the more you get comfortable with looking, knowing what is normal, it's also easy to say, mm, things have changed a bit there. I think I should go for a check-in. Also, how you mitigate uh, those DIY is just go have your your screen so that going to whether it's a gynae or any healthcare professional that does that kind of work it's not about something is wrong but just i'm coming in for a check-in oh yeah by the way i had a few questions you ask questions so ask questions research mm. have a look get acquainted with yourself what are some of the common misconceptions people have about vaginal health? So, um, for instance, using those feminine hygiene <laughs> products, they think that it cleans the vagina. What are some of the myths we have, misconceptions th yeah. that we have? I think as women, we are funding an industry that is making a killing out of us buying all these things in the name of it's supposed to smell like roses <laughs> fresh and i'm like vagina is supposed to smell like a vagina like a vagina like a vagina yeah. period right um and and just also the understanding of being a cyclical person or being your 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 vaginal fluids my daughter this morning was like mom you don't call it a discharge it's fluids discharge sounds like something is wrong I'm wow like, i'm glad okay vaginal we, fluids <laughs> <laughs> right so your vagina is never meant to be dry in yes. fact if it's dry it's uncomfortable mm. and 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 you will feel uh, it, it it also will you experience discomfort and pain so there's always supposed to be some kind of lubrication which changes in terms of color, consistency, um, and texture, depending on where you are in your cycle. Mm. Um, and, and, and something as simple as just understanding your cycle. So many of us have no idea. Mm. We will know all sorts of things. And when I say, okay, so what's, what, what, what's your cycle? Mm. You know, are you a 28 day, 26 day, 21 day kind of woman? I'm like, what? I have no idea. So those things are important because that's part of knowing yourself. That's part of also knowing, oh, day 15, I'm ovulating. That's why I'm in a bit of like heat, if mm. I can put it that way. Oh, but also that's why my, my vaginal fluids or discharge is more stretchy and see-through. Mm. Um, it then after that, it turns to be more milky and more thick and may even start to have a bit of an offensive, especially if you, you know, use the wrong soaps, um, what we call bacterial vaginosis, um, closer to your period during that premenstrual phase. So these are all things, it sounds like a lot, I know, mm -hmm. but, but the more you get acquainted, and these tools are from period apps to apps where people are talking about this. There's so many other clinicians who talk about similar stuff. Um, just, just go read. Okay. A little bit. I love that. Just go read. I'm a big advocate for learning, you yeah. know, and taking the first step by Googling or whatever the case may be. And now I want to take our conversation quickly to the sexology part. Yes. Right. So I'm assuming this is where you teach people how to <clears throat> enjoy the sex that they have. Am I correct? Y yes, that's part of it. That's, okay. That's so so take us through through the whole sexology thing. 
there's a crowd, you're talking to them, they're here to listen to Dr. Gani today, talk yeah. about sexology. Where do you start with that conversation with them? <laughs> it, it also is also very dependent on who is the crowd. Women. Okay, if it's yeah. women, um, it, it's always very closely, firstly, very closely linked to, yes, understanding yourself. But mm -hmm. also, um, especially in partnered relationships or partnered sexual intimacy, remembering that one of the big things is that we don't don't understand that we are wired differently to to men. So typical common questions I would get is like, Doc, oh, why does why does why does he not care much for foreplay? Mm. Right? You know, and yet here I am, all I want is all that foreplay for me. Foreplay is the main meal. And I'm like, yeah, because <laughs> you are built that way yes. for us. It's not inside, it's on top. 80% yes. of women will have proper uh, a stimulation or, or will have an, even an orgasm um, and pleasure and satisfaction from just erotic stimulation. That may include cuddling to flowers, to wow. treating me nice, to um, touch, you know, uh, experimenting with where are your touch points, you know, and sometimes guys have no idea of this mm. or they, we're always biased to how we are wired. So we think if, if, if I want uh, 20, 30 minutes of foreplay, that's what he wants to, he's like, no, babe, I'm a microwave, you're the cold, <laughs> you're the cold stove. <laughs> and that's where also communication comes in. So mm. it's elements of if you are particularly in a heterosexual relationship, but even in same-sex relationships, mm. um, we, as individuals, we have different sexual taste buds. Being able to communicate what you want, what is nice, what is not, mm. what you need, what what, and and also be willing to be okay. How can I serve you? You know, in in terms of your partner. So um, I love couples ones because you you get there and then to explain. You know, why do men fall asleep immediately after oh. they <laughs> roll my eyes? <laughs> and, and you know, you, you are sitting there thinking, dude, are, are you all of this exactly? Are you all of this, you're just gonna pass out. And I say, guys, shame. It's not. It's not on purpose. Mm. It's biology. It's how they are built and wired mm. and stuff. And and it helps to resolve so much conflict. Um, when you can just understand how you are wired versus how your partner is wired. Mm. They love penetrative intercourse. For them, that's the real deal. And you're like, okay, okay, dudes, that's fine. Um, let's, let's give me my on top, and then when you're done, you can have yours as, as much as you want, right? So, so understanding one another. Um, I love there is, uh, and I'll, I'll quote it from the Bible, live with understanding with one another. Mm. Understanding means I will try my best to get into your shoes to understand what does labor like. Yes. You know, we do that so naturally in, in friendships, in, in any other relationships where you're like, oh, we know Lebo doesn't like this. Lebo likes being on time. Lebo, same thing when it comes to sexual intimacy. What do I like? Be clear about that so that you're not constantly just at someone else's mercy. Um, but also, how can I serve them? What do they like? Ask. Mm. Yeah. How does a person, and I know a lot of people watching this are probably thinking the same thing, yeah. oral sex. Yeah. Is there a right way to do it? Is it a healthy thing to be doing? <laughs> Let's talk about oral yeah, sex. Sure. Yeah. So, so we, we spoke from the beginning that sexual intimacy is a spectrum. All yes. of it is sex. Yes. Um, the, the way that we behave or what we do is very much governed by things like preference, our value system, what we like, what we don't like, our sexual education, what we've been exposed to, what we haven't been exposed to. Mm. Um, and, 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 and I'd like to believe, and I hope for, for most of us, if not all of us, in terms of how can we make it better? Because mm. you can't eat rice and jay the same way all the time. <laughs> Some days you want a little bit of like coloring yeah. and a little bit of vegetables and stuff. It is how do you then make your sexual intimacy more exciting over time? Mm. It is so important to, to consider consent enthusiastic consent in everything. So oral sex, um, it is, it's crazy how we don't, a lot of people, 
if if I had to ask, did somebody ever, if they asked for, let's say, oral sex, um, did they give you an opportunity to consent for it? Did they ask you whether you like it or not? Did they ask if you are comfortable with it? Mm -hmm. Did you have the guts to say, I don't like this, I'm uncomfortable with this, I don't know how to do this, I've never tried this, right? Again, back to communication. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with, with, with oral sex, provided one, it's still the confines of being safe. And it's not just oral sex in all its entirety. Whether we are, I mean, HPV, you just only have to rub you know, skin to skin and you can transmit human papillomavirus. So being aware when it comes to safety before you engage, take care of yourself, have your screenings, but also before you engage with someone else, remember you're not just protecting yourself, but you're protecting them. What are our, what is our framework? Are we using condoms? Are we not? Are we trying to have a baby? Are we not? Um, and should something happen, what happens there? So oral sex fall, falls in that in that in that spectrum and there's different probably levels and grades of what that is um some people like it some people don't um i spoke about uh, enthusiastic consent that means both parties yes we love it we're here for it let's do this um but you also have what you call willing consent um whereby you like it i it does nothing for me, but because it doesn't bother me in any way, it doesn't infringe on any of my, you know, human rights or comfort zones. Um, uh, baby, you want? Sure, yeah. you know, um, and, and that's important. But when you start going into the zones of um, unwilling consent and outright coercion, then you're dabbling on very dangerous territory. You are infringing on someone else's right and, 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 being themselves. I love how you've answered all of these questions in our conversation because you've really framed it around the idea that it's all about knowing yourself yeah. and it's all about consent. So there is no right way to do sex. No. Sex is between you first and yes. yourself, then you and whoever you choose to have it with. Absolutely. But you guys can design it for yourselves. Absolutely. I love that. And, and it, it takes the pressure perfect. off this idea that there's some magical blueprint that you mm. must subscribe. Um, um, there's, a, there's a thing I used to say where it's, it's crazy and, and again biased because I do see more women, mm. um, you know, where you grow up having this glory about being a virgin mm. and, and it's like, oh yes, you know, you are, <laughs> you know, which is fine. Yeah. But the thing is you switch very quickly um, immediately when you get married or, you know, uh, you feel it's the right time, people now expect you to be swinging on chandeliers just mm. like that. I'm like, how? When did that you, happen? You are literally a newborn. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and, and I often want to just take that pressure off women and say, sex, you're going to be growing your whole life, even in your sexual intimacy. Go slow, go with what is comfortable, and know that the kind of sex you're having today may not necessarily be what you'll be doing, you know, five years from now, 10 and 20 years from now. Make sure you are, especially with someone that creates that safe space for you to upatula as much as you want, to take it slow, step by step, um, and, and someone who won't push you into things that feel like a violation to you. Oh. Guys, if you <laughs> did not feel like your mind was blown from this conversation, I feel like you were not listening. <laughs> Rewind, go back and listen again because Dr. Gaini has dropped so many gems and she's made me feel comfortable about saying the word vulva, vagina, sex, <laughs> all of it because it's healthy and there's nothing wrong with saying any of those words or even leaning into your sexuality and sexual intimacy as a woman. So you guys know that when we have guests like Dr. Gaini on, they have a wealth of knowledge, a wealth of knowledge, and we cannot, you know, give you everything that they have to share in one episode. So you know what to do. Go find her on her social media pages and engage with all of her content. Trust me, you will not regret it. I follow her. I learned so much from her and it's made my entire experience that much better. Before we go, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, do all the right things, comment. Tell us about your first sexual experience or what you thought of vagina was. Let's have a conversation. And Dr. Gaini, before you go, please let us know where we can find you and where we can connect with you and how we can work with you. 
So the easiest way and and at the tips of your you know your fingertips basically is yeah. on our social media pages at Dr. Uh, Facebook, TikTok, as well as Instagram. Um, but for somebody who wants to come through for a consultation, um, we are based at Morningside Medical Clinic in Santon, mm-hmm. uh, lower ground floor. Just ask for Dr. Zender. If in doubt, drop us a DM on our social pages and one of our PAs will get hold of you and, you know, take it from there. Guys, you don't even know how humble Dr. Gaini is because she's won <laughs> awards, she's on TV. There's so much to this woman that we were not able to cover in today's show. So please go on her social media pages and get to know her. You will fall in love with her the way that I have. And I think the way that a lot of South Africans have. Thank you so much for coming on the show, making time. We really appreciate it. And thank you for liberating us as women and making oh, us feel comfortable to have these conversations. You are too kind. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me. And I hope this was very especially for our people it definitely was guys thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next week on another episode of the label lion show toodles